Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about my favorite feature in Swift, enums. Enums are a great tool to represent many of our software problems. Swift uses enums in a lot of ways, and today we're going to explore the art of enums. My name is Pete, and this, this is Swift and Tips. Imagine that we want to build a game, a blackjack game. If you don't know the rules, it's simple. You start with two cards, and the goal is to have a hand that's some 21 or closer without going over. We use a regular standard 52 deck with cards from 2 to 10, an ace, a jack, a queen, and a king. These last three count as 10, and the ace count as either 1 or 11, depending on your choice. Now, how are we going to model that? Let's start with the card suit. We could create some constant that represents the card suit, right? Let's try that. Not bad, but since that suit is just an int, we can insert any value beyond 4, for example 5. And what now? Well, we have to validate and send an error for values outside of our logic. And here the nightmare begins. Someone could say, oh, but you can represent that with a string instead of ints. Well, that will produce the same issue. We'll have to validate different types of strings not related to our logic. And this is not maintainable. But guess what? This is the right moment to use enums. Enums help you to model types with finite options. This is just an example, but you can model colors, type of music, or anything that is a type of something in your problem will fit perfect in an enum. Enum type start with capital letter, but cases, which are the only possible values of this type, will start with lowercase. Now, how could I use an enum? Just simply create a variable. Start with enum type, in this case, card suit, dot, and the different values for this enum will appear as suggestion in Xcode. Let's select club. There you go. You have created an enum object. Like structs, enums are value types. And if you pass an enum value as parameter, you will receive a copy of the value, not a reference. Let's now represent the numbers. Again, we can use int to represent them. But again, we have to validate values beyond the range. And also, what about jack, queen, king, and ace? Let's use another enum instead. Cool. Now all different numbers in cards are represented here. Now what if we want to assign a value for each case in card suit and card number? We can assign an internal value from the types we know, for example, ints or strings in our nums. Let's go to car suit and under the hood they will be represented as strings. First off, this is not inheritance because enums don't support that. This is just a special syntax exclusive for enums that allows us to represent each case as a primitive value or better called raw value. In this case, we selected the string has the row value, and automatically Swift infers that. In fact, we got a special int with a row value parameter. That means we can generate an enum value from a string value. Just be careful, since that we can insert any string value has row value, this needs to be optional. It will return nil if there is no any case matching the row value. However, here we are good, and our suit is a spade. Let's go now to card number and try int has row value. We found nature because we want to assign the same row value for two different cases, and that's not possible. All row values must be unique for each case. But enums support other great feature, computer properties. What we will return here? We're going to use self instance over a switch. This will ask for actions depending on each case in order norms. In this example, we want just to return an int value that will represent each case.
Great. Now all cases have an int representation. One observation here. Why not use default for jack, queen, and king, if all of them return the same value? That makes sense, but here's a tip. Avoid default as much as you can. Default is not a crime, but the problem is that it's not explicit. If I add a new case 11, Swift won't complain at all. Because default will catch that value, and that will bring potential bugs for your code. If we go back to the previous approach, you will see that Swift will complain immediately. When you use a switch in Swift, you need to be exhaustive and explore all the possible values. If or possible values are infinite, like a string, int, or you are 100% sure a case in a num is not required, then you can use default without much compromises. But just keep that in mind. Okay, let's continue building our blackjack game. Let's create a struct blackjack card to represent the card with suit and number. We need to build our deck of cards. Let's create a function to make the deck. Now here's a question. Can we iterate over all possible values from an enum? Yes, we can conform our enums with case iterable protocol. This will provide a static property all cases and, as the name implies, we can get all the cases from each enum. So let's use it and create a for loop. Nice, the deck is done. Now let's shuffle it. Cool, now let's generate the player and CPU hands. Okay, both players have two cards in hand. Now we need to decide the winner. Let's create another enum that represents the final result. Okay, this is cool, but what if we want to not only know who won, but also the score? We can also represent additional information for each case with something called associated values. Associated values store values from any type in a case that need it. This looks like a function parameter, and you can add as more values as you need, just separated by commas. For our demo, we only care the score when we got a winner, and not in case of a tie. Now we need to calculate the score based on the player's hand. Let's build the method to get the result. Ok, we will have to calculate the score of each hand, but we will do it in a moment. Now, let's imagine that we already have the score. Let's calculate the winner. If the player score and the CPU score are the same, it's a tie. Otherwise, if the player score is greater than the CPU score and player score is not above 21, then the player won the game. Now here's the thing, with the associated values, we can just return the case, the value of the num, and also provide the associated value. In this case, it's asking us for the score, we need just to send the player score. And there you go. If the player loses the game, then we need to return the CPU. Use the CPU score as the associated value. Now let's work on the function to get the score. The only complicated case are the aces, because they could have a different value, 1 or 11 depending on player choice. Let's first calculate the score without aces. Here we just need to use the computed property created before, which is value. If we don't have any aces in our hand, it's as simple as just sum what is the values of our cards. Now, Let's implement an algorithm to calculate the right value of aces. And for that, let's count the number of aces in the hand. We will have to calculate that inside of this loop. 
Okay, let's then calculate the right ace value for our hand. For that, we will require the current score without aces in our hand and the number of aces. Let's create another function for that. Let's think about this logic. If you have two aces in your hand, at most, you can only choose a value of 11 for a single ace card in any hand, because two or more are above the limit to win in blackjack. For example, two aces cards will sum 22, and you will lose the game if you do that. Knowing that, we just need to check if one card can be 11. The rest will have a default value of one. Let's calculate the delta between max blackjack points versus of current points. Now let's calculate the scenario when an ace card is 11. If that's the case, then we just need to sum the rest of number of aces. Now, if that 11 ace is less or equal than delta, it means we can use an ace value as 11 and we'll return that. Otherwise, we will return the number of aces with value of 1. Now, let's finish get score function. We just need to check if we have a number of aces greater than 0. And if that's the case, we will execute the function that we just created. Great, we have our algorithm to play blackjack. Let's get the result. And let's create a switch to get each result type. To get the associated value score, we need to use this syntax with let and each case will return the actual score store inside. It's that easy. Let's run this a couple of times to see the results. It's working. CPU is still winning. There you go. We won. This is cool, but we want to also see the hand of each player. Let's bring that in the console. This is cool, but let's print the symbol instead of the name of the suit. We can do that by supporting custom string convertible. And let's use description computer property. By default, it's just returning the name, but we want to return the symbol, so we need to send here self dot row value. Let's try one more time. There we go. Looks much better. There is one last thing I want to share for the nums. Let's go back to result and Let's imagine that we want to save the previous game result. We can just save it as an independent variable. But here we can use something cool from enums. We can create a case called previous and pass an associated value with the same type that this enum. Doing that, we can invoke this case making reference then this case comes from a previous game. But you might notice this error already. Result is not marked indirect. Let me explain that. What we are doing here is a recursive call to the same enum type result. This is problematic to Swift because we are creating an infinite recursive call here. Think about it. Once you read the first result enum, this previous case will enter again to review result enum over and over. If you want to break this loop, you have to declare your case with interact. Voila, no more issues. Actually, you can declare the whole enum as indirect if more than two cases contain reference to the same time internally. This expands the potential of enums even further. In fact, you can build three data structures only with enums. I'm leaving an article down below about it if you want to see more. Let's go to result and save the previous result. And since we added a new case, we need to fix the switch from result. We don't care about previous associated type value, so we can discard it from the color. Lastly, let's get what we got from the previous result. This comes from an enum of many cases, but if you only care about one specific case, you can use this 
curious syntax. This will give you the associated value result if the previous result contained that case. And that's our game. But this game is not super interactive. Let's move this logic to a Swift UI project and just see one more thing about the gnomes. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Here we are again with the Blackjack game, but now all the logic is executed in this app. Let's play a little bit. We can see what was the previous game. No result yet, because this is the first one. We can hit, that means we can get a new card if we want. We can just hit two times in a blackjack game. So for example, here I lost the game. So yeah, the CPU won with just a score of four. That's unbelievable. We can see that now the CPU has, yeah, in this previous game, he, the computer won the game. And yeah, we can start over. Now here we have 13, let's hit, there we go. And, oh, wow, CPU won again. Okay, one more time. Oh, we won, we already have 21 here. So, yeah, amazing. The logic we created before works as expected. I'm not going to go deeper in details about the implementation of this. But if you want to see more, please let me know in the comments down below. But what I want to show you is one more thing about the gnomes. I made this implementation also with the gnomes. I have this black view, which is the green board that you saw earlier. And I have this black view model. The interesting part that I want to show you is this. I have created actions for my game. As you can see, hit, play, and pass are represented in this enum. And this restart game will happen when we press the play button and then we press OK. We'll execute a new game. And this is happening in the UI. For example, here we have the chip views, which are the coins, and we are just sending these actions to be executed in the view model. What I mean by that is that the UI is not seeing what is actually happening here. We are just providing actions to be executed by the view model, but the view doesn't know anything about it. So here we just send did press hit, this press play, and whatever have to happen will happen, but we don't know. So if we enter here to send, look at that. We are just getting the action from the view model. And if we press hit, we are just adding a new card to my hand, decrease the remaining hits for my game. For example, here, I cannot get more cards in this game. If we press play, well, of course, we will do this play and we will calculate all the previous logic that we made before. We will show an alert with the result. With pass, we are just showing an alert, showing the pass. And let me go back again. If we end the game, once we press OK, we will send an action to restart the game. And that will, will produce, yeah, this start game method that is literally doing what we had in the playground, just starting over again and shuffling the deck. This is the base for many architectures used in iOS. But that will be for another video. I just wanted to show you a little bit of the arts of enums. That's all about enums. If you want to learn more about Swift in general, check out this playlist here. And if you want to learn more about Swift UI, check out this one here. That's all for me. Thank you so much and have a great day.